So last night I'm in bed and I'm thinking, yeah, this is pretty pathetic. I think this in bed. I think about Clash Royale in bed. Really, really, really lame, Ash. But anyway, I'm thinking to myself, how can I really improve in 2019? Like, what more can I do? I've been covering this game every day for three years, going into year number four here. What can I possibly do at this point? Should I just come to accept the fact that I'm never going to be a great player? Well, I've already come to accept that pretty much, but I did have an idea, right? You look at all the good players in this game, and especially ladder, right? Because we're talking mainly about ladder here. And they all have just one deck that they've been playing for years. I've never done that. I've always switched. I, I tend to switch from like Golem to Bridge Spam to Three Musketeers to P.E.K.K.A. decks and Giant decks here and there, Freeze decks here and there. I kind of stay within that like kind of group of archetypes, but I never just practice one deck day in and day out and memorize and learn the matchups. And you look at all the top ladder players, guys. We have, uh, what, Royal and Flobby and Monkeys. They're Golem guys. No, uh, Bochum is, is a Lava Loon guy. We have Lucas and Jack. They're Hog guys. You can just, I can keep going here and going and going and going. Mikel is a, a P.E.K.K.A. guy. And, and, and everybody seems to have one deck for ladder. All the ladder beasts have one deck that they just are so confident in and they just use it and they're so good with it. Macarius being a mortar player, stuff like that. So I figured to myself, you know what? I'm going to try that in 2019. In 2019, I'm only going to play one deck. Now I might change one or two cards if they get nerfed into the ground because I'm not going to be stupid here. I do want to get better at the deck, but I'm not going to be, you know, blind and ignorant to balance changes. But with that one caveat, I am only going to play one deck on ladder and challenges, nothing else ever. Let's go ahead and take a look at the deck that I chose and take a look at the other contenders in my one deck. Then we'll play a couple live matches and compare uh, maybe in a year to where I was now to where I hopefully will be in a year. Hey, yo, my song's on. I gotta get my rub on some thought thought. All, the three buckets All right, so these were, were the decks that I had to kind of choose between in terms of decks that I thought fit my play style and decks that I could actually hopefully be successful with. So, of course, Three Musketeer, my favorite archetype classically uh, throughout the history of the game. And I like this deck a lot. I actually like the version probably with Fireball instead of Ice Golem a little bit better, taking the cost up to like, what, 4.2, 4.3 Elixir. Uh, but, you know, I played so much Three Musketeers in the past that I thought, you know, let's just switch it up a little bit and see if we can have success with a different archetype. So I didn't decide to go with Three Musketeers. I also didn't decide to go with a Giant Miner 3 spell deck. I feel like Giant Miner 3 spell just never dies. It's always a safe pick. And hey, even if Prince and E-Drag get nerfed in 2019, I could have swapped out of those two cards and have those, like, you know, I could have a, a, a mini P.E.K.K.A. or something, replace the Prince, and of course, like an E-Wiz if I needed to replace that E-Dragon. So there was some room for flexibility as well, because the rest of the cards, Mega Minion, and the spells, of course, in Minor and Giant, they never really die, you know? And then uh, the other deck was, of course, just a, a Golem deck, because Golem decks have all we always found relatively easy to pick up and have a, a moderate level of success with immediately. So I thought that, hey, if I spent a whole year learning every single matchup of every goal against this Golem deck specifically, I'd have a really good chance of getting much better with Golem. But I decided not to go with that as well. And the deck that I chose, guys, is this classic P.E.K.K.A. Bridge Spam deck. I think it's so strong defensively, which is part of the reason, like, the only bad matchup that I can think of off the top of my head with this deck is maybe a bait deck with Inferno Tower, because you don't have many answers. You do have the Zap in here and the Ewas for the Inferno Tower, but still, if it's a good player, you don't have the uh, anything for the Goblin Barrel. You have to really rely on on Royal Ghosts and Minions and Ewas and Zap, so you don't have a great counter for their win condition. They have a, a, a lot of good counters for yours with the Bridge Spam and what not. So that's really the only bad matchup. It does well against Hog, obviously, with a P.E.K.K.A. E-Wiz combo. It does well against Royal Giant. It does well against, you know, anything annoying on ladder, Elite Barbarians, you name it. This deck can hold, can stand its own. It does well against Lava Loon. It does well against Balloon. And of course, it does well against Golem and Giant decks with that P.E.K.K.A. in there. So I thought, you know what? It's a really strong deck defensively. I guess Graveyard might be, a well, 
For Graveyard, you have minions and poison as well. So you have really a lot of options in this deck. So let's go ahead and try it out, guys, and see how we do here on Ladder. And we'll see. I'll make sure I cover this deck, you know, throughout the year as well. I'll probably give you guys some updates as well to see how I'm doing. Uh, good luck, and uh, let's get things started here. Against the level 12, so we have the opportunity. We're just south of 5,000 trophies right now, so we don't run into a lot of level 12s, but we'll see if we can pick up a, a victory here. Starts off with a, uh, <clears throat> with a elixir, come on Ash, <laughs> with an elixir collector. So we're just going to unload here and we're also going to poison everything as well. So he comes in with the Barbarian Barrel, also the Bandit. He's obviously playing three Musketeers, that's no surprise. We're going to get a charge in on that Hunter and uh, boom, get a lot of damage on the tower. We made him use a lot of elixir and we took care of the pump. That was a perfect start to the match. Now, if he three Musketeers here, we can just play a Pekka in the back of the same lane as the two Musketeers. Let's see what he does here. Okay, he's not really doing much of anything, so we'll play Minions. Kind of almost potentially threw those away. Okay, now we're just going to throw away the Minions here, and we're going to peck it in the back of the two Musketeer lane. I did have a couple Elixir lead there, so he might come at me with a Battle Ram. Probably will in the right, so what we're going to do is, is Ewiz and Royal Ghost. So Ewiz and Royal Ghost onto the Musky. Hopefully that we can retarget off of the Ewiz. We don't, unfortunately. So that kind of sucked. We're going to take some serious damage here in the right. I'm going to have to Bandit here to stop that Bandit from charging onto the tower. He still has to respond to the P.E.K.K.A. Hopefully, okay, good. The Bandit does survive there. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much going to be it. But he used a lot of Elixir there, too. He might pump up. If he does, we're going to pressure him again with the Battle Ram and the Minions and he might pump up in the back right here. I think that's what he's probably going to do. So let's see. We'll let him pump. And where is it? Where is it? Right now. Boom, boom. There it is. Pump, we called it. He's there. We're going to zap that up. We can't really afford two hits. That's fine. And now we're into double elixir time. So what I think I'm going to do here is just... Uh, yeah, I'm going to poison this. We got enough damage onto the tower there that I'm not worried about poisoning. And we're just going to P.E.K.K.A. here at the bridge. We're also going to play a Bandit so his Bandit doesn't get a charge off again. Make sure you have the... T he does connect, but he's splitting his damage here, which is totally fine with us. And let's see if I can get a Bandit charge on the right. He opts to ignore that. That's good. Uh, so I'm actually going to go in hard here. He has no spell, so we're just going to unload in the uh, left lane. And then I'll get back to my poison. That's a really nice poison there. Even if he kills this whole push, which he doesn't, we still take the uh, tower down. We're able to cycle all the way back to that poison, and it worked out there. And again, we're just going to peck it here in the right, and that should be GG. He's going to band it. We're going to go ahead and Royal Ghost over here. Just help out a little bit with some tankage. And there it is. A, a relatively easy first um, win here in this video. So there we go. He's going to just same lane. Uh, Musky will give him the good game. And uh, feed them some, well, I don't know if pancakes are, uh, <laughs> if pancakes are, are the pancakes considered BM? I don't, I don't think so, right? All right, let's go into the next match. I don't know why I have, like, this really unhealthy habit of gemming silver chests when I don't even need the cards. I just do it to, like, free up another chest slot, which, which makes no sense. All right, we'll give him the good luck. He gives me the opening here to pr put a little pressure opposite lane. Let's see what he has here. Guards, maybe. I'm thinking it's... Uh, oh, my God. <laughs> okay, Elite Barbarians. Wow. So, I'm going to E-Wiz back here. I'm going to have to E-Wiz and Zap. And that should take care of everything. I'll probably lose... Okay, he's going to actually... I probably should have placed that Royal Ghost uh, on the, uh, the Fire Spirits, not on the Miner there. So, that was a bad play on my part. My E-Wiz will connect with those minions. So we had to waste three Elixir. That's good for me. And the Royal Ghost will at least respond to those Fire Spirits. Try to get something going here uh, on the other side. So I'm actually going to Kite here. If I can pull those Fire Spirits, I do. I'll take one Fire Spirit damage, but he's still going to have to respond to this Battle Ram. And he does with another... Uh, okay, that was great. So he might Miner here. He doesn't have like any great plays, I feel like. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and Bandit. And geez, I feel like it's a it's a decent time to drop a packet in the back here. It's gonna try to build a big push in the left. And 
even if he d gets a little bit of damage with these E-barbs. I, I totally forgot, by the way, he had E-barbs. He's going to zap. I'm going to zap, too. He's going to get a lot of damage with this E-bar, but I think I can take his right tower here. And I don't think... Yeah, okay. We're going to play minions over here. He's probably going to take my left tower. So the P.E.K.K.A. in the back proving to be kind of an ill-advised uh, plan there. He has Furnace in hand. Does he have enough Elixir for it? He does. He's going to... I'm still going to take the tower, though. So that's good. Hopefully I can take the Furnace as well, and it looks like I can. So, man, that really worked out, I guess, in hindsight, the P.E.K.K.A. in the back. And we're moving into double Elixir time, and I do think I have the advantage in double Elixir as well, so I'm pretty happy about this. I'm going to Royal Ghost in the back here. You know he's going to want to get a push going in the right, so bad predictive uh, bandit there, obviously. I'm just going to go ahead and Battle Ram, and I'm going to E-Wiz as well, because he does have the E-Barbs, and there it goes. We're going to just apply some serious pressure, keep him off my... Uh, I'm going to Bandit and Royal Ghost here. I want to make him use a spell or something on my on my tower. I don't want to give him the free tower. I'm going to Zap to try to get a, a Bandit charge. We do. And we can just kind of, again, I'm going to peck it in the back again here, guys. I don't want to. He, he obviously has a spell in this deck. So otherwise, he would be, okay, there's the log. So let's see what he does here. I have a spell, too. I'm going to use it here. I'm going to minions. He has zap. That's fine. So what I wanted, he just used a lot of elixirs. So I'm going to I'm gonna spam opposite lane here. And hopefully this will be GG. Going to zap that up. Oof. And by GG, I meant no damage. <laughs> okay. Peck in the back. He might, if he if he e-barbs in the, in the pocket, I'm just going to battle ram. Okay, that's fine. Minions, Battle Ram. And then we get a nice little push here in the opposite lane as well. He has Furnace, so we got to be careful about that. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and Poison here. And I'm going to drop that E-Wiz and Zap. Try to keep my troops alive if possible. We're going to go in with a Battle Ram over here. Also going to go in with minions. Trying to avoid the uh, the furnace there. Try to get... He's the zap. I'm going to try to get a charge here with this bandit. We do not... Ah! That knight in just the nick of time, man. This is a match here, guys. I could obviously switch to... I'm going to try to catch a miner. Nope. There's the miner. Do we catch it still? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. Okay, he's going to E-barbs. That's totally fine. I'm just going to zap over here. He's not going to get that much damage with the E-barbs. So again, kind of opening up a split lane opportunity here. I'm actually going to band it over here. That was a nice, again, I'm going to double P.E.K.K.A. here because P.E.K.K.A. seems to be my best option at this point. I'm also going to minions because he has minions and furnace in hand. Also elite barbs. So let's see. Uh, he uses his minions there. I'm going to attack over here. Also going to get Ewiz down for that furnace. Help out. And there we go. Pekka seals the deal. Double Pekka. Man, that was harder than it, it felt like it should have been there. By the way, guys, in the comments, feel free to give me any critique that you may have. After all, the idea here isn't just to win. It's also to improve, right? So, uh, crown chest, we will open that. Uh, there we go. We get nothing that we need, but it's all good. Sorry, Wombo. I'm recording right now, man. So going into the next one here against uh, this guy. Another kind of, with this deck, uh, you know, you guys can feel free to reference my other videos that I've actually done on the deck. But it's one of those decks that you're definitely going to want to uh, be playing slow, especially when you get a starting hand like this, right? I'm, th I'm picturing he's going to be playing uh, either Lava Hound or Graveyard here. So uh, he goes same lane, which is actually good for me because... Potentially, he could have hit me hard with a balloon the opposite lane. I didn't even have minions in the cycle. So a little bit of a dangerous play on my part there. And uh, what I'm, I'm going to end up doing here is just pressuring opposite lane. Because it's going to guards. I'm going to poison, wait for that mega minion to lock on, then do some damage. That was not a good start. Using my E-Wiz in the beginning, not a good play. And I think I'm just going to give him this tower here, guys. Because we cycled Ewiz early on. Give him the well played. Cycled Ewiz uh, early on, which was rough. 
didn't really have any answers. I could have maybe poisoned on his guards, but that could have been rough too. I think in double elixir time we'll have a chance. It's not over yet. But again, I have to be very careful about cycling my uh, my ground cards early. So I'm going to need my poison probably here in offense. Because he has minions and bats and all this stuff. So that's good. Poison's down. That's good poison value. I'll take it. I'm going to also zap these up. Hopefully Bandit can finish them off and get it to the tower there. He's out of air targeting or ground targeting cards at this point, but we don't get the P.E.K.K.A. to the tower, and that's really what we needed there, right? And now he's able to go ahead with a, a Lava Hound in the back. Going to be trouble here. I'm going to go same lane P.E.K.K.A. again just to kind of tank, but he, he could potentially get the left tower here. And here it is. I'm going to play a high, oof. Gonna wait again, play an E-Wiz here. He's gonna get the tower, but I need to try to kind of stop the bleeding and get a nice little offensive going. Yeah, with arrows and, uh, <laughs> with arrows and also lightning. Yeah, that's gonna be a tough ask here. We're gonna zap, maybe get this left tower down, but still, it doesn't matter. I mean, the right tower, rather. Yeah, we didn't even get it close. So we got our butts whooped on this third match, guys. Definitely something that, and this is exactly why I wanted to do this, right? Is I wanted to, we'll give him the well play. I really wanted to show losses. That way I can experience or, or I can share you with you guys what I want to do with this deck, right? That was a three crown to zero. Pretty awful. But I need to kind of practice this matchup. What do I need to do differently? And what I'm going to do is probably, I've been in my own clan here for a while, CWA YouTube clan, right? And what I think I need to do is go to a real clan, go back to Nova EG or whatever, and just start practicing. Like after that loss, what I would do is go back into a match and practice, you know? So going against McLovin. What up, McLovin? So... This time, I think we'll just start with a Royal Ghost. Okay. Nice, easy start here. Getting some uh, immediate Royal Ghost value. And because he went with the Knight there, I'm going to put some pressure opposite lane. And force him to use a Log, and I still connect with that Bandit. And he misses the Bandit as well. So, again, I'm just going to come uh, with an E-Wiz here. That will deny all of the damage there. It gets a Fireball out of his hand. And he just fireball. I still think they have a little bit of a chance here to connect with this. Let's see. I'm going to ignore all that. So a nice defense on his part. I'm not even going to zap here. Just going to keep the pressure going. And he gives the good game. I don't know why. So I'm going to keep the pressure up here. Sometimes with this deck, one of the good things that I noticed about the, you know, especially the pros that I've shared play this deck on the channel here, is they just keep the relentless pressure going. Giving him a little bit of an opening here with that P.E.K.K.A. in the back, but it should be okay. Even if he gets a hit, I can always zap to retarget, you know. So what I'm going to do is uh, Battle Ram, zap, retarget. And then I have a nice little push here. You could Tesla... Even if he Teslas, I'm still going to get that hit there. That's good. And then the P.E.K.K.A. is going to be able to distract that Expo. Basically, throughout the life of that Expo. Well, we get a little... I should have played that Royal Ghost at the bridge there. So, mistake on my part. And it cost us, like, a lot of damage, too. So, that wasn't good. But... I still think that was an okay play. It, not the Royal Ghost, but I think the... It was an okay play to go ahead and use the Battle Ram opposite lane like that. And I kind of want to get a Tesla out of him high on the, in the left lane, but I don't think he's going to give it to me. I'm just going to go ahead and poison here, do a little bit more damage to the tower that we're going for, and we already have P.E.K.K.A. back in cycle. And he thinks, I'm sure he thinks in his head that I, okay, that I overcommitted there, so we'll see. Now I can just play a P.E.K.K.A. in the back here, in the left. And at this point, I can almost just poison cycle out. Well, I can. Just poison cycle out. So that's good. We're going to battle ram again in the right here. Poison. Nice poison value. I can play a royal ghost here at the bridge. Help out with those uh, archers. He has fireball in hand, so we do have to be careful of that. 
I'm just gonna another. I'm gonna drop another Pekka here before that one dies. And all I need is a Zap and a Fireball to finish this off here. And we'll Battle Ram in this lane. And now we have uh, the Poison in our. Did I say Fireball? Oops. So we have the Poison. We have the Zap, and there it goes. A relatively easy matchup for this uh, for this deck. Uh, we'll give him a good game. McLovin really thinks it's funny. <laughs> and we'll go into the next match. All right, so we got our trophies back. Man, that Lava Loon, though, that Lava Hound matchup, not sitting too well with me, right? And that's one of those situations where... All right, guys, I just edited this match out. Uh, this was my next match that I went in, just to be full transparency, because it was against another level 12, and I want to show, like, at least equal level content. It was against a Royal Giant deck, as you guys can see. So let's go into the next match here. And it was relatively easy, too. Uh, just, I had, I mean, it was a hard counter. I had Pekka, he had Royal Giant. Nice and easy. All right, so Albertasso. We'll give him the uh, the nod, and I gotta change my emote deck, by the way, guys. Eh, this is kind of an awkward starting hand. I'm just gonna cycle a zap because you might be playing balloon freeze or peck, okay, or giant or giant balloon or giant graveyard. But uh, we'll see what he has first before we get super aggressive with a bridge spam opposite lane. We already have a big investment in the Pekka down right now, so. We're just gonna, okay, he has rage too. What the heck is this? All right, well, we're fine. We can just let this uh, E-Wiz and Pekka and Bandit and Royal Ghost kind of do their thing. And what I might do here, guys, is actually, because we don't know what big spell he has. Unfortunately, that E-Wiz is gonna go in front. He actually pushed it in back. So we're gonna go opposite lane here. We'll get that Pekka to the, uh, to the left tower here, guys. I don't even have to zap. So we did a lot of damage there with that P.E.K.K.A. Oh my god, and the other side too! Golly, and that's why I love this tech. Oh my god. <laughs> I don't even know what to do at this point, right? Well, this makes up for the bad feeling. Having all these hard counter matchups. Oh! Okay, okay, I see you. Poison there. We, again, against Sparky, another another matchup where we have a huge advantage. Actually, Bandit's going to get a charge. Okay, I take it back. <laughs> Bandit will not get a charge off. I'm going to E-Wiz on top of this uh, Sparky here. And that should mitigate that push. Boom. Yeah, talk about a hard counter. Giant Sparky, E-Wiz, Zap, uh, Pekka. Not bad, right? So he does have Rage, so... He's still not going to do any damage to the tower. Only, like, what? What? Two giant hits? Not too bad, right? And that was a big elixir investment on his part. So, I'm actually going to come in at him here and try to take this. Uh, that's a good Sparky value. Boom! But we will keep Sparky in the, uh, the poison uh, long enough to take that tower down. So, we can essentially, as long as we don't lose here, we're good, right? We need our poison. A little bit late on the. Uh, I'm gonna play it. E was in the back here. It's okay if we if he if we he takes this tower. I should say. I keep saying this, but as long as he doesn't three crown us, right? So there's 19 seconds left. Still plenty of time for him to potentially uh, get something going. So we're just gonna band it, and uh, we can play a minions of our own here and zap. It got actually kind of close for him towards the end. Did a lot of damage. In with that rage there. Got to be careful. But at the end of the day, we're able to pick up the victory. We'll give him the well played, even though we had the matchup there again. But that's what you'll find, I believe, guys, with this deck, is I believe you'll find that you do have the matchup more often uh, than not. Just based on the current meta and stuff right now in the game. All right. One more against uh, Jonapova. Good luck. And this is kind of an aggressive hand. And we'll start out with a bandit. I'm going to start out aggressive for no re real reason here. He's going to bandit as well. We get our bandit charge off. That's good. And we'll see what he does here. I'm going to play a royal ghost just in case. Just in case he puts something in front of that bandit. Now he plays a dark prince in the back. We're just going to cycle minion the same lane. And depending on what he does here, I could drop a P.E.K.K.A. We'll see. Uh, he's going to arrow, so we're just going to kite with battle ram. 
and he's going to Night Witch. Very interesting deck this guy is running. So let's see if he has a big spell. We're sure to see it here. We'll be sure to see it here. There's a spell. It's going to zap as well. So that was a big aggressive play on his part, I feel like, at least. He has Bandit back in hand, so he's probably going to use it here. There it is. Neither of our bandits take damage there, so I'm going to Royal Ghost. Tower will help me out. They don't have to respond to the Royal Ghost. So, so far, kind of uh, tit for tat, <laughs> as the kids say. Okay, the kids don't say that. I'm going to Pekka here. And we'll just let the Pekka take care of this while we kind of recoup Elixir. I'm not big on... Okay, this I can actually zap. Ah, crap, I forgot he had arrows. <laughs> Can we get one Pekka Swing? Can we get one Pekka Swing? No. Gonna have to sacrifice a Royal Ghost here. Actually, we won't sacrifice it. e will help out. So good defense. He's back to his Night Witch. That's gonna be Night Witch. Okay, it's not gonna be Night Witch down. Gonna Bandit of our own here. Our bandit should live on to take care of that Night Witch. So you guys can see, not much going on here early on. We're going to P.E.K.K.A. again before that uh, Dark Prince goes into a charge. This time we're going to be try to be ready for this uh, Inferno Dragon. Meanwhile, he's going to zap. I'm going to zap too. Take down that uh, Inferno Dragon. Make a connection there on the left tower. Oof, nope. I stand corrected. I'm gonna cycle some uh, Royal Ghost in the right here and kind of see what he does. I wanna keep my P.E.K.K.A. in hand. Just again, kind of cycling here. I'm giving him a lot of fireball value. He also has arrows, right? There's the arrows. Let's see if he fireballs here. There's the Fireball Zap. He's really keen on Fireball uh, Zapping. I'm gonna start with a P.E.K.K.A. in the back this time, because he's a lot of Elixir to take care of that E-Wiz. He could potentially like hit me with a, uh, okay. Battle Ram, something in the, I should have kited there, my bad. It's okay though, I'm gonna let the rest go. He's used a lot of Elixir in the opposite lane, so. Zap down. Inferno Dragon down. Okay, this is it, this is it, this is it. Arrows down. Go in big time push left lane. Doesn't have his arrows. He has his fireball though. Now it frees us up to be able to play Peck it in the back again because he won't get a charge with that Dark Prince. And this could be, he's going to go all in here on the right. Again, we're going to be forced to uh, E-Wiz here. This bandit doesn't get a charge off. I'm going to zap. Going to have to. I don't want to, but I have to. And then we're going to hit in the right lane here. This time. It's going to, might fireballs, so kind of want to be cognizant of that. We do make contact. I don't want to overcommit with the zap. I'm going to Pekka in the right. Pekka should be able to take care of all this nicely. 1 minute 18 seconds remaining here, guys. Again, we want to get him, uh, we want to get the poison down. Also, okay, fireball zap again. There's the zap. There's the fireball. I'm going to try to put a lot of pressure here on him. The arrows. 60 seconds left. Royal Ghost is down. Royal Ghost will take care of that. Darn it. I think he's got me here. I mean, I think it might be a draw. Yes, Fireball Zap it back in hand. And you, we've already seen that he's not afraid to use it. He Fireballs there. We need one more Zap, one more Poison. Gonna have to P.E.K.K.A. first, as much as I hate doing it. Okay, let's try to be cheap here with our spells. And the arrows. One more card away. 
Go aggressive with the E-Wiz. We'll poison first, because it's going to take more time. Then we'll zap. There it is. Pull it off, guys. Boom. We'll give him the good game. And you guys can see why I love this deck. It's pretty solid, right? Guys, that's going to do it for the video. I hope you enjoyed this. I get a lot of you guys requesting for me to play live. And maybe you've seen the both the upside and the downside of these type of videos. But either way, I enjoy bringing it to you guys. I don't feel like my commentary is a, as, as on point as it normally is. And my energy level, for that matter, uh, as a presenter in these, uh, in these videos. But trying to bring this video to you guys, both as an experiment on the deck all year. But also just in response to a lot of you guys wanting to see me play a little bit more often on the channel. So I will update you guys with this deck especially when and if I make changes to it throughout the year so guys thank you so much for watching check out my player stats and profile and make sure you guys hold me accountable thanks to statsrail.com my player stats and profile is in the description below in terms of using this one deck right thank you so much for watching a huge shout out to Bren Chong my YouTube partner check out his information as well thanks and as always take care guys